Let's give thanks to the light of the world this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are gathered together under the banner of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who rules and reigns in all past, present, and future that is to come. Good morning, Life Church. Good morning, good morning. It's uh, great to see your faces once again. You know, with the staff, we're around here, and we, we have staff meeting through the week, and we're in our offices and stuff throughout the week. And I just tell you, I love this staff, and they're incredible, but it's, it's great to have the building full of people. I mean, and I love seeing their faces, but it's great to see multiple faces in this place. And so it's, it's great to have you gathered. Uh, my mother and my sister are here with us this morning. Can y'all welcome them, please? Amen. Great to see you, Mom. I got my amen corner right here, so I'm good. I'm good. Uh, it's going to be great. And um, just as you pray for my family, too, my, my wife is not feeling well. Um, she's headed to the urgent care this morning, and uh, Kenya's the Lone Ranger. Like, she's here, and she's good, so uh, hopefully everybody gets to feeling better. And speaking of Kenya, I love embarrassing my daughter. She made all region, um, and she's the only sophomore on there. The rest are seniors, so congratulations to Kenya. Yeah, pretty impressive. Her when she does her split, her legs go up to her ear, which is crazy. I just I hurt looking at that. Um, it is quite impressive. She is very skilled. Uh, she got a chance to go to Kennesaw State yesterday for a cheer clinic, and so yeah, just praise God for what He's doing in her life. Um, this weekend, I don't know if y'all knew this or not. Um, it's Christmas, right? Uh, so hopefully you got your shopping done, all that good stuff, fellas. Uh, it's Christmas, just a reminder, okay? Go go get your stuff. But we are having service this Saturday at 1030 right here. And I don't want to see you, but I want you to bring somebody with you. Bring a family member, bring a friend, bring a neighbor. Great opportunity for them to come and hear the gospel. Uh, so please make plans to be a part of that. And also Christmas morning, we're going to have a, a mini sermon that I'm going to present to you by way of uh, the screen. So you'll get the link to that. Watch that with your families. Gather everybody together in the living room and watch that uh, just for a moment of worship as I bring a very short message to you. And uh, we'll also have a worship song or two that you can worship to on Christmas morning. So with that being said, let's press into the Word of God for today. Take your Bibles. Go to Luke chapter 1. That is going to be home base for us this morning. And our sermon title is... Hope because God knows how to hold us up. We've been in an Advent series, and December 4th, we looked at we've got hope because God knows when to show up, and then hope because God knows when to speak up, and this morning God knows when how to hold us up. And so we're going to press into that and see what the Lord has to say. Father, we come before you once again, God, desperately needing uh, to hear your word, God, to feast upon the truth that lies within the text, God. We stand here and we sit here and we come, God, to worship you and you alone, Father. What a joy it is, what a blessing it is to come and have the abilities to sit and to comprehend, God, and to be in the presence of you with the fellowships of sa- fellowship of saints and believers, God. As we're all going through this life together, we acknowledge our dependency on you, our need for you, our desperation for you, God. We are here for your sake, and for your glory alone. So God, may you be exalted this morning in the preaching of the text, the singing of praise to your name that is so worthy of all that we have to give. God, meet us right where we are. Cleanse our hearts and our minds, God. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for redemption. Thank you that you are absolutely real and you're here with us right now. So God, we love you. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through verse 56, we have what is known as the Magnificent. Uh, If you have any Anglican background, this will be very, very familiar to you. It would have actually been a prayer or a song that you might have actually remembered, or at least the first several verses. But the Magnificent, we call it that because that is from the Vulgate. The Vulgate is the Latin Uh, translation of the Bible, fourth century translation of the Bible. So the Vulgate or the uh, the Magnificent comes from that. And it is an amazing, sweet, beautiful song that we see from Mary. And in this song, she 
presents a number of things, but let me give us a larger meta narrative that is going on by way of the author, which is Luke. Luke wrote the book of Luke. He was a physician, but Luke was also a historian. Luke found that the Lord had gifted him in this particular area to write and document uh, the happenings, particularly around the birth of Jesus. And Luke says, what we've got to do is we've got to gather this information. We've got to write these things down. We've got to get some good historical happenings around the birth of Jesus. So his primary objective was to capture these eyewitnesses, to go and to interview individuals that knew and were around during the birth, the life, and the death of Jesus. And he did a good job at that. And even if you step back for a second and you even look at American history or, or world history, oftentimes the person that is writing the history was not there during the history. But we still have accounts of, of our history, and they use these same collective principles and data to gather information. And the very same principles that we use now are ones that Luke would have used to gather the history. And he put together the, the book of Luke by way of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we have these words before us because of the legwork that Luke did. Now, Luke was not there present during the time of Jesus, but he knew somebody that was. And Luke decides to go and find out where this lady named Mary is. So if I could paint just a illustrative picture for you, I wasn't there. So I'm going to kind of guess. But I figure that Luke sends word to somebody saying, hey, we've got to find Mary. Because Mary has the eyewitness account of the birth of Jesus, right? So we got to go find Mary. So maybe Luke sends words to somebody that knows where Mary is, and they go and they find where Mary's at. And Luke ends up meeting with Mary, and by this time Mary is up in age. And Luke sits down maybe in a room with candles or, or lanterns around to dimly light it, and he sits across from Mary, and he says, Mary, this is what I'm doing. I'm writing accounts of the birth of Jesus, and I need your testimony. I need you to tell me what happened in those moments. Mary, do you, do you remember what happened? And I can see Mary looking at Luke and going, you know what? I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember. And Mary begins to tell a story, the birth of Jesus. And maybe she begins to explain what happens, and, and she starts off by saying, yeah, there was this moment where I was there, and this angel shows up to me, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And this angel comes to me and says, hey, Mary, this is what it's about to happen to you. Uh, the, the, you're about to give birth to Christ the King. Jesus is about to come, and, 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 and he says the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. And Mary's probably thinking, you know what? I took health class at Nazareth Middle School, and uh, <laughs> angel, you got some explaining to do. Okay, because this don't really make all that much sense to me, but I'm a woman of faith. I trust God, so be it unto me according to your word. I don't fully get this or understand this, but it's what you say, and you say it's from God, and I know God, so let's make it happen. And she agrees to do it, and she's explaining this, and she probably says, you know, I was around 15 years old when this happened. Just a young girl. And after I got this word from the angel... I was excited, and I run over to a place called Judea, and I go to my friend Lizzie's house. That's Elizabeth, by the way. <laughs> I go find Elizabeth, and I knock on her door, and she opens the door, and I say, hey, Lizzie, how you doing? And then all of a sudden, Elizabeth just gets this pure excitement, and something happens on the inside of Elizabeth. I didn't really understand in the moment, but she said that the baby inside of her leaped. And that baby inside of Elizabeth was Johnny, right? John the Baptist. And he leaps on the inside of her. And then Elizabeth starts saying this stuff to me. Elizabeth says to me, she says, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But hold on a second. I didn't even tell Elizabeth what had happened yet. But she already knows. And she says this to me. 
She says, how amazing is it that you would come and visit me, the mother of our Lord? And then she says to me, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And then Mary says, I, 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 I had this response, Luke, and you've got to get this down word for word. This is what I did. I just didn't know what else to do. I just started to sing a song. And this is the song that I sang in that very moment after that happened. This is what I sang in verse 46 of Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. And he has shown strength with his arm. He scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. And he has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And the scripture tells us in verse 56 that Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. Now, if you read this song of Mary, I hope you've read it before. I hope you've studied it before. But, but if you hear that for the first time, my hope and my prayer as those under my teaching and as those at Life Church, I hope you feel remnants of like the Psalms. Because if that's what you're thinking, you're thinking on the right track. You're in sync right now. You're, you're, you're currently thinking in the right way if you're thinking, this is, sounds like the Psalms as Mary is quoting this. And you'll actually find that there's reference to particular Psalms. There's reference from Psalms 11 in her song. There's references from Psalms 103. The opening verses of, of Psalms 34 sound like verse it uh, sounds like what Mary says here in, 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 in her song. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord in verse 47. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Now, this is not really shocking that Mary would have this type of song coming up out of her. Because Mary's a, she's a Hebrew girl. She's Hebrew. Mary knew the Shema. And the Shema is one of the most famous prayers from the Bible. It's what any good Hebrew or Jewish, Jewish lady or, or young man would have known. They would have memorized the Shema. We get this from the book of Deuteronomy that says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. Mary's about 15. And within those verses, there's about 15 different references to the Old Testament. This is what comes up out of her. And the reason that it comes up out of Mary in the way that it does is because Mary has studied her Bible. Mary has learned and memorized so many parts of the Old Testament. Her mind and her heart are full of the Bible. And listen, when her heart and mind is full of the Bible and it comes time to sing, guess what she's going to sing? The Bible. That's what she does. Because what's in us, what's in me, is going to come out of me when life squeezes me. The scripture tells us in Matthew 12, 34, that out of the, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's an overflow of the heart. But here's the truth. If all you filled your heart and all you filled your mind with is, is daytime television and old town road, it, that ain't really going to help you when the bottom falls out. Amen. Right? Right? Young Thug and Barry Manilow can't help you, right? When, when life is squeezing you and, and stuff is going on, when you're struggling, right? When the bills are due, when, when you don't have the means, when the money is not there, when there's nothing in the bank. But if your mind 
and your heart had been meditating on the word of God, you'll begin to sing in the midst of the financial struggle and issue and, and anxiety that is trying to encroach on you. Instead of going to fear and doubt and worry, you'll start singing Philippians 4 that says, God will supply all of our needs Amen. according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what will begin to come up, up out of you when you're dealing with, with sickness. You'll begin to sing the song of Psalm 73 that my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. When you find yourself in the midst of fearful situations, you'll begin to sing Psalm 27 that says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In devastation, you'll begin to regurgitate Psalm 34 that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. This is what will begin to come out of you in the song that you have. And when you find yourself getting good news, like Mary gets really good news, you'll find yourself singing Exodus 15 that says, The Lord is my strength, the reason for my song. Because he has saved me, I praise and honor the Lord because he is my God. That's what we begin to sing. Because it's what we have set our hearts and our minds on. And when we fill our hearts and our minds with raggedy TV and raggedy music and raggedy people. Hello. We'll find ourselves producing fruits of the flesh and not fruits of the Spirit. I need the Word of God to produce fruits of the Spirit in my life. If you fill your heart up with God, God will come out. If you fill your heart up with yourself, yourself will come out in those moments. So when Mary has this encounter, she gives voice to what is already in her heart. That's what she does. She doesn't sing about herself. She sings about the nature and the character of God. That's what she's doing in this magnificent. She's singing of the goodness of God. Mary worshiped God. Mary is not to be worshipped. See, wrong views of Mary have led many, many astray. And all you need is the word of God. What you need is your Bible and proper teaching to stay in sync with the heart of God. You allow the Bible to be the channel through which you filter your philosophy, through which you filter your theology, through which you filter your anthropology. You filter the word of God through these things. You don't accept anything just because somebody on a platform said it or somebody with a title said it. Somebody with a microphone said it. No, you filter it through the word of God. See, Simon Peter in, in John chapter 6, he, he rose up and, and he said, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. He said, we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. He said, I believed and I have come to know. I know this for myself. It's not just what somebody told me or necessarily what I learned in Sunday school. That was a good spark to help me understand my faith. But me knowing you is what's continuing to sustain my faith. Amen. That's what's keeping this thing going. I've come to know for myself. And this is what Mary has done in this song. She's come to know for for herself. You look at the Bible, you see what's there. If something is said that is not there, you don't receive it. In verse 48 of Luke chapter 1, it says, For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. Now what does that mean? When she says they'll call me blessed for all generations that are to come, does that mean that we're going to look at, at Mary and say, Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and, and at the hour of our death? Is, is that what she said? Is that what the Bible says? No. Mary said, For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. But read the next verse. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His name. We praise and worship his name. He is the one that has done it. And the hope and the prayer is that as you live this life, as you continue to seek the Lord and follow God and how you lead yourself, lead your family, lead your wife, lead your kids, the hope is that you'll walk in faithfulness to God. 
And we're going to do it imperfectly because we're human and we got stuff going on in us and we still got a war against the flesh. But the hope and the prayer is that you will seek to honor the Lord and the generations that come after you. They will look back at you and say, blessed was my grandma or my grandpa, not because of them, but because God chose to use them. And that's what happens with Mary. We look back and say, man, she's blessed because God chose to do something through her. God chose to use her. And that's the prayer that we are to have as we live this life. And those that look back at us say, you know what? God used them in a miraculous way. God used them. And so she's got this hope because God is holding her up. She's got this joy inside of her because of the news that has come. It's it's amazing. It's miraculous that God would would choose her. Mary is explaining this to, to Luke. It's a joyous moment. that this, this is the God of the universe that has sent an angel to me to say, this is what's going to take place. It's awesome. So God holds her up in that sustained joy. But God also holds her up because we got to step back from the romanticized narrative and look at the actuality of the situation. Right? She's 15. She's betrothed to Joseph. And she come around talking about an angel did it. That wouldn't really fly with me. I don't know about you more spiritual than I am, but I wouldn't fully get that one. But God is holding her up in the midst of a really crazy looking situation to the world. The Bible declares her to be highly favored, but she's highly favored even when Joseph is talking about putting her away. God is still holding her up and she's still highly favored, even though society will probably reject her. God is holding her up, and she's still highly favored, even though she's got to deliver a baby on a dirt floor and put him in a trough. God is still holding her up. When you know that you are being held by God, God's very hand is holding you, here's what's going to happen for you. Your praise will not be dictated by your circumstance. Doesn't matter the circumstance. We on the dirt floor. We got to have a baby here. The angel said it's going to happen. It's happening. Praise be to God. I'm in a difficult situation. Stuff looks rough. Relationships are on the rocks. Things are difficult. Holiday season, right? Don't know what the job looks like. You know what? Thanks be to God. Continue to praise. Continue to worship. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, in one sense, uh, the, the song of Mary, it is unique. It's quite unique because we, we've never seen anything like this with an individual before, and, and we don't see it again. Right? Mary is the one that God chose to use. So it's a very unique moment, a very unique song. But in another sense, it, it, it really should be the song of every believer. It should really be the song of every believer. Let me ask you a question this morning. Is what is in this verse or these series of verses, is what is in this song that she sings, is that true for you? Is it, is it true for you? Does your soul magnify the Lord? Does your spirit rejoice in God, your Savior? Has he looked on the humble estate of you, his servant? Will generations call you blessed because God's hand is on you? Is he mighty? Has he done great things for you? Is his name holy? Is he merciful to those who fear him from generation to generation? Is that that true about you? If it's true, and it is, this is your song too. It's your song too. It's not just Mary's song. This is your song. It's true of you today. Has the Holy Spirit overshadowed you, and and this time it's not giving birth to Jesus, but it's Jesus having given birth to you. He's given you a new life. We're learning just in looking at the faithfulness of generation to generation to generation. I I stand on the shoulders of of faithful men and women in my family, my parents, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. The stories have been passed down Generation to generation of how they turn to God in some of the most difficult of times. And those stories give me encouragement 
Now, with where I'm at, when I face difficult situations, when I think about my kids and I'm like, man, I got three kids and them jokes are crazy now. But then I think about the fact that my grandmother and my grandfather raised 17. I'm all right then, okay? <laughs> I ain't got 17 of them. And what they had to go through and how they continued to, to raise a family in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. My grandfather was, was a deacon of the chair board, and, and, and my mother's father was a, was a pastor, Pastor Macedonia Baptist Church right up the street. The faithfulness, generation to generation. And I have no doubt that when Mary receives this information and she launches into this song, I just, I, I can't, I can't help but think Mary's probably thinking of somebody back in the Old Testament, somebody back in the past that was also blessed by God with the birth of a son. In 1 Samuel, her name was Hannah. And Hannah, too, sang a song at what God did. She said, my heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you. There is no rock like our God. And for the next eight verses, she continues on in chapter 2 of 1 Samuel to just praise and worship God at what he did. And century later, centuries later, there's another girl named Mary who's been given this baby Christ the Lord. And when it came time to sing a song and rejoice at the marvelous gift, I can't help but think she probably had Hannah in mind. Because there's somebody else that turned praise to God because only God did this. And the question for us this morning is, is who's going to look back in generations past to find you, to find your name, to see what kind of song you sang when God showed up for you? What kind of song are you singing? How can those in the future draw from the praise of God in your past? And as we wind this thing down, I, I, I want to go ahead and ask our prayer team to come on up as we, we laser this, this focus in. Because my, my question to you this morning is, have you found your song of praise to the Lord? Your song of praise to the Lord, have you found it? Are you singing it? Have you encountered the Lord Jesus today? Have you been made new? Or maybe it's that you've gotten so caught up in life and so caught up in, in the worries and the cares of this life that you've forgotten your song. You've forgotten the privilege of singing. Are you singing the song of the oppressed and the depressed and the repressed? Are you singing the song of the redeemed? What song are you singing this morning? Is your heart and mind currently saturated with the word of God? Or is it saturated with mindless TV? With meaningless music? Social media? Saturated with political pundancy. Do you know every lyric to the newest song on the radio, but yet you tell me you can't memorize scripture? Do you know what's happening in Russia right now, but you don't fully know what's happening in your own house? What do you sing when you get squeezed by life? Is praise the fruit of your lips or is gossip the fruit of your lips? Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he had a quote. He said this, that praise is the honey of life, which a devout heart extracts from every bloom of providence and grace. Praise is what you extract from the bloom of providence and grace. God is a providential God. That means that there's nothing that's happening that escapes his eyesight, that escapes his hand. God is providential over everything in your life. And his providence and his grace, they coincide and they work together in a beautiful symphony. 
And does praise come as a result of you being aware of the providential hand of God? At the grace of God. It's easy to lose sight of the providence and the grace of God when you got when you got your sight set on everything else. On the world, on the happenings of the day, on things that we fill our hearts with. What song are you singing? Because the truth of all of this is that God is holding you up. God is holding you up. And he's deserving of every ounce of praise that we have to give. Amen. And so if you are struggling to find that song, if you're struggling to say, you know, I've lost sight of this, I've lost sight of what the Lord has done in my life, of what he's continuing to do, even embracing the joy of the unknown, that freaks us out because we, we need to know. But it's okay if you don't know because God knows. And if you're struggling to find that song, I encourage you to go to the Word of God and start in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. Sing that song. And this morning, this prayer team is here to connect with you and to join with you to help you start singing that song. But oftentimes, most of the time, the majority of the time, every time, starts with a true confession of where we are. It's God, this is where I am. This is where I need to repent. This is what I need to stop. This is where I need to start. And this morning, we've got a church that wants to come around you and put our arms around you and say, hey, we're in this thing together. Let me help point you to the song and the reason for your song. Maybe you're in a place of struggle this week of things that have happened. And you just need to come and just refocus the laser on Jesus. Maybe there's difficulties. Maybe you went to the doctor, you got a diagnosis, or a family member got one, or a friend got one. You just need to, we need to put this in prayer. That's what we're here to do. And so I'm going to pray, and, and then we're going to sing and stand in worship. But I, I want you to take advantage of the moment. I want you to come and connect with somebody. Don't let your insecurities hold you back in your seat. Don't, don't worry about anybody looking at you or anything. We, we all need Jesus. We all need to be up here praying. All of us. So take advantage of the moment. God, thank you so much, Lord, for the gathering of the church. Lord, thank you that we get to do this together, Father. Thank you for the song of Mary and the fact that, God, you are you're holding us, God. And you, you, you detailed that by way of this account that Luke writes through these eyewitness testimonies, like Mary's testimony of, of your faithfulness, God, and a reminder of your providential plan to, to come to us, to save us, God, to redeem us, God, to pick us up from from this place of death to this place of life, God. You've come to do that, and you're still doing that salvific work today. So, Lord, give us the right perspective, God. Remind us of the joy that is in us. In Psalms 51, David said, I, I gotta, I've got a hope for salvation. Remind me of the joy of my salvation. Maybe that's us this morning, God. We just need the reminder. We need to connect with somebody in faith. Father, I ask that you would do it. I thank you that you're going to do it. God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.